a man in a tailcoat, holding a cane, and wearing a top hat emerged from the black fog on the high platform. His face wore a wonderful and polite smile, and his demeanor exuded the air of medieval nobility. He was the master of this castle, Count Carmel. You have harmed my eldest son, killed my wife, and now you want to harm my daughter. Carmel smirked, giving a strange and eerie feeling. You may have misunderstood. I am the doctor your daughter paid a hefty price to hire. Until she cancels the contract, my mission is to provide the best treatment and service for your daughter. Carmel chuckled, bones in his entire body made of normal sounds. Yes, yes, she needs treatment. She has brought misfortune since childhood, so she must be locked in a cage. She must be cured. Under their gaze, cracks appeared in his tailcoat, and his muscles began to swell, growing sharp bone spurs on his shoulders and back. In an instant, he swelled and twisted into a giant several meters tall. Carmel suddenly raised his head, and his cheek split in half, one side showing a charming and elegant smile, the other side revealing a cruel and ferocious brutality. You people will all be crushed. The monster transformed by Carmel roared, holding a butcher knife in his hand, charging towards them like a heavy tank. Lin smiled faintly, suddenly took out a revolver from his pocket, clicked the safety. Ah, oh, indeed, you're a gentle and kind father, and since there's a mission, you have to die. Bang, bang, bang. Lin, with a smile on his face, fired several shots. Crackling electric sounds filled his entire body. Die, the monster roared. His speed was only slightly reduced by the bullets, but these shots couldn't cause fatal damage. He roared. His massive body leaped, and the crimson giant knife suddenly slashed towards Lin. Lin did not retreat, pulled out the chainsaw behind him, and collided heavily with the giant knife. Boom. A loud noise. The bricks under Lin's feet instantly exploded and sank more than 10 centimeters. Lin lightly jumped and landed on the battlements of the castle. Looking up, he smiled and said, Whitey, go to a safe place. After I subdue this family member, I'll come down. Before Whitey could understand what a safe place was, he suddenly felt his body light. Then he saw Lin, who was holding his neck, fall into the rolling black fog outside the wall. Big brother, you didn't mean jumping off a building, did you? Stay here, I'm leaving first. Big brother, this is not a safe place. It's not. I have acrophobia, but it was of no use. The long tentacle adhered to the castle wall. Lin leaped in the black fog and landed on the platform lightly. He looked up, smiled slightly, and the long tentacle spread out. Is the trash dealt with? Carmel turned around, smirking hideously. The huge monster grinned, roared, and suddenly rushed forward, the huge butcher knife slashing towards Lin. Lin did not retreat, pulled out the chainsaw behind him, and collided heavily with the giant knife. This guy is definitely a freak. Countless sparks burst. Lin, holding a chainsaw, grinned and said, Ah, the strength is really great, I'm bleeding internally a bit, but it looks like the two of us can still have a fair fight. Boom. The two suddenly retreated, creating distance. But in an instant, they moved forward again. The whirring chainsaw slashing through the air, clashing with the incoming giant blade time and time again. For a moment, sparks flew on the high platform, and the loud sounds echoed throughout Divorce Street. Lin and the monster were in a fierce battle. At the same time, on the street outside the castle, two tall and mysterious figures stood in the distance, having been watching the ancient castle for a long time. One of them was burly, with stitches all over his body. The other was a three-meter-tall noblewoman, polite, with pale skin, dignified and luxurious. It seems your disciple isn't dead yet, the puppet lady said, crossing her arms, smiling, and raising an eyebrow. Bloodsaw, carrying the chainsaw, moved his shoulder blades and said, Do you really think my disciple spent these two years with me for nothing? This kid watches me saw people every day. His mental toughness is already beyond ordinary. In my opinion, he just lacks an opportunity. The puppet lady glanced at him and asked, So, did you know there was a problem with this castle early on? Bloodsaw revealed a cruel smile and said, Of course, this is the pit I carefully selected for my disciple. After all, if this kid wants to become a member of the Night Doctors, he needs means to deal with sudden abilities. Otherwise, what's the point? High platform. Kid, have you had enough fun? then die. After dozens of rounds of combat, he had roughly figured out the human's strength. Although his physique was robust, there was still a considerable gap when compared to him. And in this regard, he had absolute dominance. Roar. He roared. And at the moment when the chainsaw was lifted, his giant blade suddenly swept towards Lin, aiming to cut him in half at the waist. Lin smiled mysteriously and said, I've indeed had enough, but you should understand that I'm not a chainsaw expert. Almost at the moment when the giant blade was about to strike, Click, Lin's left hand suddenly reached out, instantly grabbing the raging blade. 
The surging blade Aura tore apart the floor on Lin's right side with a loud sound, but his left hand was unharmed. How is this possible? The monster trembled suddenly. He immediately felt that his blade was restrained as if it were held by a steel clamp, making it difficult for him to move. Crack. In an instant, under his astonished gaze, the giant blade in his hand was instantly crushed by Lin's left hand sharp fragments exploded. In the reflection of the fragments, he was shocked to see that the human's left hand, like a winding snake, revolved around him, revealing the mysterious and sinister teeth on the palm. Lefty, let's finish him off. Keep your head down. There's no one around. Don't make yourself look so cool for no reason. Although he said that, Lefty immediately prepared for battle. And in that moment, the monster suddenly saw that the human's eyes changed. There was no more laughter in his eyes, only concentration and seriousness. His whole demeanor suddenly became fierce, like a unleashed cheetah. In an instant, a chill rose in his heart. Lin, holding the chainsaw, was lifted into the air like a spider. The night demon blade, wrapped in the second tentacle, refracted a strange cold light in the night sky. Under the darkness, Lin looked down at the monster indifferently, saying, Because I'm about to go all out, remind yourself to be prepared, because what you're about to face is my full power and augmentation. In an instant, under the monster's astonished gaze, a giant arm with the head of a black dragon snaked out from his shoulder. The huge black dragon head emitted a furious roar. The massive dragon's arm suddenly spewed out scorching flames towards the entire high platform. The monster was shocked, roared, and crossed his arms, resisting the raging flames that resembled magma. But the temperature was too high. In just the moment of contact, he felt his skin quickly charred and melted. He painfully roared, rushing out of the flame range. But before he could catch his breath, a sharp and black blade, like a knife, cut into his neck and crimson blood spurted out. Ah, uh, he screamed in agony. Long tentacles spread out in front of him, and the sick and mad smile of the young man appeared in front of him. This is what I learned from Lady Bloodcloak. No matter when, you must face each battle madly, always with the intention to kill the opponent mercilessly, and deliver destructive blows without hesitation. Lin stared at his terrified eyes up close, and the chainsaw in his hand, unexpectedly and without warning, sawed into his abdomen. Dense blood and minced meat splattered out. I'll kill you, he roared, enduring the intense pain, and launched a fierce punch towards Lin. But before that punch landed on Lin, his entire arm was instantly bitten by the sinister black dragon head on his shoulder. The violent lava in the dragon's head instantly melted his arm. Ah, uh, he let out a painful and long howl. His other giant arm tried to move, but at some point, Lin's left hand that had spread over was opened, revealing the mysterious and sinister teeth. Both arms were restrained. He was almost at the point of no return. A sound of bursting flesh and blood, under the roaring of the chainsaw, Lin beheaded the monster on the spot. Crimson blood dripped over Lin's eyes. Amidst the hysterical and painful howls of the monster, Lin reached out and restrained his neck. He squinted and said, A cruel and indifferent father, an executioner wielding a butcher knife, a devil with a mask, is this how you appear in your daughter's eyes? I have to say, it's quite interesting. Buzz. In an instant, his pitch black left eye suddenly focused. Camel immediately felt a chilling curse spreading from that eyeball to his entire body. As he trembled, his skull began to melt. The intense pain and icy melting sensation made him let out a final howl as he melted. Splash. Countless flesh turned into mucus fell to the ground, sizzling with smoke. And a system prompt sounded in Lin's ears. Splash. Carmel's nearly melted half-body fell to the floor. Lin retracted all his tentacles and prosthetics, landing slowly on the ground. Click, click. The head with melted features slowly moved its lips, emitting a ghostly murmur. Why? Don't. Kill me. Lin picked up his head, smiled faintly, saying, Ah, because you're my second bait. If I kill you, how am I going to cure your daughter's illness? He casually threw Carmel's head to the side for now. Then, his gaze fell on the towering spire. He turned to Bai, my friend. It might still be dangerous next. Hang in there for a while, and I'll come get you after I finish treating my client. Bai was dumbfounded. He immediately reached out, shouted by the mouth, Brother, be careful. Make sure to come out alive. He knew that he couldn't help his brother at the moment. Instead, he might distract him. But he believed in his brother's strength. After all, this was a senior who hadn't died in this different world for so long. Outside the castle, the puppet lady gazed at the tower of the castle, blinked, and said, It seems that your disciple won. The aura just now, if I'm not mistaken, seems to be from those advanced creations of your demon association. Bloodsaw thoughtfully carried the chainsaw and said, It might be the spoils after he destroyed the association. 
but I'm also a bit puzzled about how he used those creations. Generally, those biological weapons require strict and precise pairing. The puppet lady glanced at him and said, Well, tell me the truth. In your hands, he should have long ceased to be the human he was two years ago, right? Bloodsaw touched his chin and said, Well, once he had his heart dug out by a guest, so I reluctantly performed a small surgery for him. He seemed very happy about it. The high tower, Lin, carrying the chainsaw, step by step ascended the spiral stairs, heading towards the top. The further he went, the stronger the intense cold and the smell of blood became. It was as if someone had meticulously planned a slaughter here, dismembering some creature piece by piece. Finally, a decaying wooden door appeared in front of Lin. Cruel and ruthless father. A mother who starves her daughter with malice. A brother who tortures his sister with slaughter. Locked in a cage in the tower for years, enduring inhuman abuse and torment. Was this your experience before your death? Facing cold eyes, cruel slaughter, being dismembered bit by bit, the unvented hatred in your heart, even if turned into a demon, even if falling into this dark world. Is it hard to restrain the desire for a happy home? A smell of rotten decay mixed with the stench of blood surged out from the dark door and Lin saw the scene inside. A huge hook descended from above, and a rusty cage, only one meter in size, dropped onto the hook. It felt like he had returned to a long time ago. Crimson blood splattered on the walls, and all around was dirty feces mixed with viscous substances of fresh blood. Compared to the luxurious decoration inside the castle, this place was like hell. There stood a little girl in a snow-white dress, her body full of paleness contrasting sharply with the black and foul-smelling surroundings. The little girl had her back turned, and her skin was covered with crack after crack. Lin maintained a calm smile on his face and said, Miss Alice, let me reintroduce myself. I am the doctor you hired, Lin. Pleased to serve you. Mission Branch 1, try every possible means to dispel the resentment and curse on the target. Understand her past and heal her trauma. Additional reward, special reward X1. Mission Branch 2, try every possible means to kill the target or subdue her. Additional reward, special item X1. Mission Branch 3, if the first two missions cannot be completed, escape from the House of Happiness. Additional reward, 1000 Skull Coins. Completing any one branch will earn you mission rewards, 3000 Skull Coins, 3000 Base Experience. The pale little girl slowly turned her head, revealing her cheeks and eyes covered in horrifying cracks. Big brother, be my family. I've given up on the dad and mom you don't like. She slowly turned around, extending her small hand in Lin's direction. Protect Alice like you did to your old brother. Be Alice's new brother. Doctor, shouldn't you prevent your patients from dying? A vast, chilling atmosphere pervaded the entire tower. Even Lin felt the profound coldness emanating from the bottom of his heart. Maintaining composure, Lin asked, Can you tell me why? Your parents and brother abused you during your lifetime, leading to you becoming a vengeful spirit after death. Alice responded emptily, No, I abused them. In an instant, Lin's expression stiffened. Alice continued emptily, They were damn bastards, dared to make my little Alice forget her birth mother. Little Alice was truly happy, but the happier she was, the more I hated. Because those were supposed to be things I gave to Alice. Lin's pupils suddenly contracted. He immediately opened the target system panel again. Mrs. Mary. Race. Vengeful spirit. Alignment. Chaotic evil. Combat ability. Massive curse derived from extreme hatred. Introduction. A witch burned to death during the witch hunt. Formerly Count Carmel's mistress. Adept in dark magic and curses. Gave birth to a daughter with Count Carmel. Plotted to harm the Countess due to jealousy. Discovered during the witch hunt. Executed by the church through burning, turned into a vengeful spirit, possessed her daughter, seeking malicious revenge against all the living beings in the castle. Indeed, indeed, the panels for both him and Alice were rapidly switching at a high frequency. This means that the current girl's body has been hosting two evil spirits all along. One is the real Alice, and the other is this vengeful spirit. Splash, a burning smell suddenly wafted from among them. Lin raised his head abruptly. The hollow face of the little girl gradually revealed large areas of burns, the stench of burning flesh and blood emanating strongly. Alice is so lovely, always a well-behaved daughter. Hateful witch hunt prevented me from destroying that woman and that deceitful Count Carmel, even that boy. Simply repulsive. Lin's pupils stared firmly at the girl in front of him, a tremendous chill surging through his body. Are you saying that their drastic change in behavior was caused by you? He asked. The hollow girl replied, Ah, Alice can't be deceived. 
Brother should protect me. Alice will also be good too. Brother. The entire tower trembled, and in the spiral staircase behind him, Lin ran wildly with his tentacles, while on both sides of the walls, one blood-red handprint after another appeared. A strong smell of blood surged from behind him. The ground started to burn, and a stream of crimson blood, like a torrent, flowed down the stairs. In the next moment, Lin burst out of the tower, and he immediately saw that on the wall of the high platform leading to the outer wall, a raging blood-red flame had already ignited. Seeing Lin rushing out from the tower, he immediately shouted in fear, Big brother, what on earth is happening? But Lin had no time to pay attention to him now because almost simultaneously, the blood-colored flames on the high platform turned into billowing waves, engulfing him. Without any hesitation, Lin gritted his teeth, and his body quickly rushed into the passage he came from. And now he finally understood why there was such a huge resentment, powerful enough to envelop the entire castle, dragging it into this dark world. Because this resentment did not only come from the vengeful spirit, but also from the dismembered Alice. The fusion of the two vengeful spirits made their resentment and hatred almost boundless. But there must be a way to find a cure. If not, the system would not have issued the mission branches. Alice was completely unaware. She might never know that all of this was orchestrated by her birth mother. She harbors hatred but seeks happiness at the same time. It was her birth mother who destroyed her entire childhood. Remembrance of days past. If used on living beings, it can reproduce their state at a certain point in the past. What if it's used on an entire area? Could it reproduce the scenes from that time? Ding. You are launching Remembrance of Days Past in the target area. Do you want to proceed immediately? Yes. Please specify the time point for reproduction. The day Alice was killed, before the castle fell into the dark world. Lin bit his teeth. He didn't know the exact time, so he could only make a vague estimation. But this was the only way he could seek information now. Remembrance of days past. Activate. In the pitch black corridor, the scene of the rainy night when Alice was killed appeared. Count Carmel, the lady of the house, and that boy all showed signs of madness and cruelty. They held bone-cutting knives, excitedly and ferociously crossing the corridor under the seductive curse, heading towards the high tower. Time rapidly rewound. Screams and cries of pain echoed from the tower into the night sky. When those three people appeared in the corridor again, they still had the same psychotic and cruel expressions, but their entire bodies were covered in blood, and the blades were stained red. Drip, drip, fresh blood, dripped from the basket in their hands, drop by drop, staining the entire corridor red. Hide, hide my screaming daughter, in the walls, in the hall, in the fireplace. He quickly rushed to the corner where they buried the bodies at that time. With one punch, he smashed the decayed floor. Underneath, he saw a small hand still bleeding. Hatred prevented the bodies from decaying. And throughout the entire castle, such body fragments were scattered everywhere. Ding, you have obtained Alice's body fragment X1. Is this the reason for the spread of the curse? Just because of envy? Just because of malice? Is it so cruel that even her own daughter has to become a tool for revenge? Len bit his teeth. As the burning flames spread over, he quickly rushed to the stairs leading to the lower floor. She wanted to turn her daughter into a vengeful spirit like herself. She wanted her daughter to personally destroy this happy home for her. Lin continuously rushed to various curse points in the collapsing castle, constantly using remembrance of days past piecing together the chaotic truth. My dear, I feel something's wrong. Alice seems to have not eaten anything for several days, but I remember we had lunch together this afternoon. And that child, she seems very afraid of me. I swear I didn't abuse Alice. I know you feel guilty about her mother's death. I've been trying to accept her, but I never thought she would be a witch. But no matter what, a kind motherly spirit wouldn't let me vent my displeasure on a child. I seem to forget a lot of things. Why is there blood on my hands? Here, this is Alice's. How could it be? I, I seem to not remember anything. Damn it. I hit her. I, I cut her hair. Dear Holy Mother, please. Please forgive me. I don't know how. I, I seem to hate her a lot, yes, hate, she's the child of that witch, that witch seduced my husband, and her child, should die too. In scene after scene reproduced, Lin saw the gradual change of the lady from a compassionate mother into a malicious and hateful woman under the curse of the vengeful spirit. During that time, Count Carmel and their eldest son also underwent changes. Why did I give such an order? She's my daughter, how could I allow her to be locked in a cage? I, damn it, damn it, damn it. Am I crazy? I seem to. Ah, uh, my son has changed too. He used to be an upright child. But he actually slaughtered. Slaughtered those little animals. He seems to be going to the freezer and the high tower more and more frequently. He brought a gift to Alice. I hope. 
I hope it's not what I think it is. I'm crazy. I've gone mad. I feel like I'm cursed. Ah, uh, come at me. Whatever it is, come at me. Don't let me abuse my daughter. In the reproduced room, the scene froze on Count Carmel shouting hysterically. And that was the last time they showed signs of clear reason. Since then, they never woke up again. Their wills had been thoroughly distorted and pathological under the curse of the vengeful spirit. And one can imagine, after all three of them were completely affected by the curse, Alice suffered terrible torment and bad news during that time. Din, you have obtained Alice's body fragment X1. Lin bit his teeth, swiftly navigating through the collapsing castle, constantly collecting the fragments of Alice that were dismembered by them back then. This is why there is resentment. This is why she so desperately wants the company of her family. Is this the happy home you were expecting in your heart? Boom. Lin punched and smashed a piece of floor in the corner of the hall, seeing the half-head of the girl still bleeding and shedding tears underneath. But it was at this moment that a sinister voice suddenly came from behind him. What are you looking for? Lin suddenly turned around, only to find that the little girl was already standing behind him. And at this moment, her body was burning in a blazing fire. Her expression was no longer vacant, but rather sinister. Lin knew that the evil spirit before him was the ghost that caused all of this back then. The witch who was burned alive. Alice's birth mother. In an instant, the girl lifted her hand sinisterly, and Lin was immediately restrained by an invisible force on his throat, lifted into the air. Lin gritted his teeth, a smile tearing across his face. Alice, I am, looking for your body. The girl's sinister face suddenly froze. I am your doctor. Of course, if you really want, we can also become family. In front of him, Lin immediately saw the panels of Alice and Mrs. Mary switching rapidly. And this was the only way Lin could determine who he was facing. Seizing this opportunity, Lin shouted, Zuo Zuo, almost as if understanding without words. His left hand suddenly melted into countless black slimes, flowing onto the ground. One by one, crying babies crawled out of the slime, filling the entire hall with spiritually polluted screams. Ah, uh, a scream of horror. The girl released the force restraining Lin and covered her ears under the massive spiritual pollution, starting to collapse. Lin hesitated for no moment quickly gathering Zuo Zuo again. Lin, gritting his teeth, shot out all his tentacles towards the direction of the kitchen at full speed. Because there, there was the last piece of Alice's fragment. After understanding that he was dealing with a dual ghost and realizing that the entire castle was constructed by curses, Lin knew that the ghost could not be dealt with by his current power alone. The corridor in front of Lin also instantly changed, igniting a fierce fire, and the blood-red flames rolled towards him. Behind him, the contaminated girl, who had already escaped the pollution, was sinister, and she was almost within reach. At this moment, Lin didn't say a word, suddenly reached out his hand, and took out the reward he had just received, which is veil. Putting on the veil, Lin rushed into the burning fire. Lin's pupils suddenly shrank. He immediately felt the scorching and freezing touch from his back. A bloody hand directly penetrated his back without any obstacles, grabbing his beating heart. The severe burning sensation coming from his heart, as if to burn his entire body. Buzz, in an instant, the surging curse brought by the black pupils made the entire body of the ghost start to melt instantly. A piercing scream echoed through the entire corridor. But Lin knew, even with the eye of focus, it could only block her for a while. Because this entire castle was formed by Alice's hatred and resentment. She was the earthbound spirit here, and as long as the castle existed, she couldn't be eliminated. And now, the ghost and Alice were sharing the curse and resentment here. The pig-headed butcher seemed completely oblivious to the changes around him. He was still stirring his thick soup. He and the surrounding scene seemed so out of place. Lin gritted his teeth and quickly rushed over. You're here. The pig-headed butcher turned around and glanced at him, saying indifferently, The soup is ready. I promise to let you taste it. Are you ready? He turned around, holding a bowl of rich soup in his hand, emitting bursts of fragrance. In front of Lin, the introduction of the soup suddenly appeared. Unfinished heart and brain soup, a rich broth made by blending a kind heart and an evil brain. After drinking it, you will randomly gain a piece of knowledge and receive a random curse. Lin was stunned, his gaze focused on the soup. And at that moment, he saw in the simmering soup in the pot, the appearance of a brain and a heart floating up. Alice's heart. It was also the last remaining piece of the puzzle. But why would it be in? It seemed like seeing Lin's confusion. The pig-headed butcher said lightly, that is a very rare material. Also one of the rare kind-hearted things in this dark world. 
However, due to being tainted by too much malice, it did not meet my requirements. This pot of soup is a failure. Lin immediately stood up and said deeply, Can you give me that heart? I can trade with you. The pig-headed butcher said lightly, Do you want to use that heart to resolve the resentment of the little girl? I am a doctor. I have accepted my employer's commission. Behind, the raging tongues of fire, devouring everything, surged madly in their direction. Within the flames floated a hideous and screaming specter as if it would consume everything in the next moment. The butcher with a pig's head said casually, All right, if you drink this soup, I'll make a deal with you. Without any hesitation, Lin calmly took the bowl of soup and drank it in one gulp. The rich aroma surged in his mouth, and immediately, system prompts rang in his ears. In an instant, he catapulted himself into the entrance leading to the freezer. Behind him, the flames rolled and surged. The howls of evil spirits rushed towards him. He heard the casual voice of the butcher with a pig's head. You need a heart of extreme evil to trade with me. I'll come find you in half an hour. If you break the deal, I'll take your heart in exchange. Almost at the moment he finished speaking, his figure disappeared into thin air at the original spot. No one knew why he came. No one knew his true identity. And Lin didn't care anymore. Evil spirits pursued relentlessly from behind. Lin rushed into the freezer, immediately extended his hand, forcefully inserted it into his own mouth, and vomited out all the soup he had just drunk. But even after vomiting it out, the effects of knowledge and curse were already imprinted on him. Lin wasted no time. He quickly regained his composure, took out all the body fragments he had collected from the system space. At this moment, he unprecedentedly focused. Every puzzle piece should be in its original position. He took out a needle and thread, gritting his teeth. With the fastest speed, he sewed up the dismembered and torn fragments, one stitch at a time. Little by little, the corpse in front of him quickly took shape, rapidly returning to its original form. Once again, scenes he had seen in his past memories surfaced in his mind. I have a serious but gentle father. I have a mother who likes to talk but never lets Alice go hungry. I have a brother who always gives gifts to Alice and never bullies her. I have all the family, all the people who love Alice. It was Alice's happy home. In the scene, the girl gently closed her diary, hugged it to her chest, her eyes filled with happiness. Because her biological mother had died when she was very young. Although she occasionally felt nostalgic, the memories gradually became distant. Because her father and stepmother were both very good to Alice, she wanted to repay them well when she grew up. She also wanted her father to tell her the location of her mother's grave, to pay respects to the mother who had become a blurry memory. Although her father always refused and refused to tell Alice the reason for her mother's death. But she believed that Alice would find out. She would tell her mother that Alice was living a very happy life, and Alice was grateful. Whoosh! The door of the freezer was blasted open by the tongue of fire. The burning and hideous little girl appeared at the door of the freezer, her overwhelming hatred causing the entire freezer to blaze. Wearing the fire-resistant face mask, he rushed towards the fierce ghost. Curse removal. Activate. Lin shouted loudly. At the moment when the flames engulfed him, a dazzling light covered the entire space. He needed to reach the real Alice, carrying her body, letting his own soul tell her everything. For the specters, curses were the companions of hatred and resentment, entwined with their bones and flesh. Removing the curse was equivalent to stripping away their flesh and blood. How dare you? Amidst the piercing screams, her blood-stained hands almost instantly stabbed into Lin's chest, bursting out from his back. This time it was not an illusion, but a real penetration. Crimson blood gushed out from his back in an instant, spraying a rain of scarlet in the surging flames. But in that moment, she suddenly saw Lin lifting his head. She saw the horrifying smile on his face. You let me get close to you, Buzz. In an instant, the specter's eyes shrank suddenly. But it was already too late. In that elegant smile, Lin's hand pierced her chest, holding her body in the raging flames and white cascade. Endless hatred and malice immediately surged from her body, like voracious black vines, roaring into his arm and instantly penetrating his consciousness. As if an endless wail, as if falling into hell, scalding and icy, piercing and ruthless. In that moment, countless scenes accompanied the hatred and resentment, madly surging in his pupils. He saw the girl, imprisoned alone in a high tower, saw the father with a cold expression, mercilessly whipping her with a whip. Saw the cruel and sick mother using scissors, cutting off her golden hair bit by bit, mixing animal guts and forcefully stuffing them into her mouth. Saw the brother, mad and excited, using a dining knife on her arms, carving deep, visible bone scars on her face. It was a piercing scream from the depths of her soul. Torment, abuse. Yet, even in such circumstances, deep inside her heart, there still lingered a trace of hope. 
like the memories of the past, like the times when she sat by the warm fireplace with her family. Father always worked late and returned. The stepmother treated her extremely well, never making her feel like an outsider. The brother was mischievous, but he would always stand up for her when she was bullied. It was a noble family living in the medieval era. Although the castle was gloomy, it was warm. Uncle Knight, though stern, would quietly give her small gifts on her birthday. Uncle Chef, though rude, would sometimes sneak in and laugh, handing her a few pastries. Big Brother Doctor was the scariest because every time she fell ill, he would give her a very bitter potion. But every time she drank it, whether it was a cold or a cough, she would quickly recover. So Alice also knew that Big Brother Doctor was a good person to her. Until being imprisoned in the high tower, hung in a cage, looking at the sky outside the high tower. Because of those past beautiful memories, even the most cruel torture couldn't erase her hope. That night came when she expected warmth from her father, mother, and brother. However, what she got was a nightmarish evening, a blood-stained butcher's knife with a mad and ruthless smile. Like three evil dogs devouring prey, they swung their butcher knives, smiling, one after another, tearing her apart in that high tower. Hatred, unstoppable hatred and resentment. At the moment she was dismembered, the endless hatred erupted completely. She didn't wait for anything she believed in. The nightmare in her heart was the bloody reality. Gradually, she heard the sinister voice of a woman in her ear. Gradually, she recognized that the voice was her biological mother's. Mom said Alice had to kill. Father had to die. Stepmother had to die. Brother had to die. Everyone in the castle had to die. But Alice didn't want to kill Uncle Chef because he secretly brought food to Alice in the cage. Alice didn't want to kill Big Brother Doctor because he cried for Alice and he wanted to secretly take Alice away but his leg was cut off. No, not important, because Alice was no longer a human. Countless scenes emerged in the surging hatred, bone-chilling and infuriating. Because Lynn knew, all of this was orchestrated by her birth mother, that malicious and jealous woman. Lynn gritted his teeth, desperately searching for that soul and the countless malice enveloping him. The curse erasure temporarily neutralized some of the specter's power, but the surging malice and hatred were still relentlessly assaulting his consciousness. Like plunging into a cold ice hole, Bone-chilling coldness enveloped from all directions, constantly diving, continuously searching. And finally, at that moment, he found the girl in that endless hatred. The golden-haired girl, curled up in the deepest part of the icy pool, enveloped in countless hatred and malice, the kindness she never abandoned. Lilith, Lynn shouted and called out, reaching out forcefully towards the girl, the friendly and gentle hands reaching out to her again. Let me heal your wounds. The vast darkness and hatred surged like a geyser, instantly sweeping over his entire body. Countless black capillaries covered his cheeks. His hand, which pierced into the ghost's body, instantly broke, and his body was thrown far away like a torn paper kite. The black blood, tainted by hatred, splattered the sky. His body heavily landed dozens of meters away, leaving a long blood-red trail. But Lin paid no attention. He raised his head, a maniacal smile appearing on his face. He suddenly reached out from the system space, grabbing a broken spear. Without any hesitation, he picked up the shattered spear and thrust it into his right leg. The ghostly aura surging within him suddenly activated the power within the broken spear. Dazzling divine light instantly surged through his flesh, rushing towards his entire body. Lin lifted his head in an instant, facing the ghost that was screaming towards him. He didn't hide, he didn't evade, because he knew. You've lost. A crazy and triumphant smile appeared on his face. Almost at the moment when the bloodied hand was about to pierce Lin's eyes, that bloodied hand suddenly stopped. She found herself unable to advance further. She found that the endless hatred and malice driven by her seemed to be running counter to her at this moment. Mom, it's you who did this. A girl's crying voice suddenly sounded from her body. No, no, Alice, no. It was an extremely mournful scream that came from the deepest part of her body, in the icy pond of consciousness. At the moment when her hand reached out to Lynn, she saw everything Lynn had seen in the past and wanted to tell her the truth. Pain, sorrow, despair, hatred. She saw the whole process of her birth mother cursing her family, heard the whispers in their minds, and saw the pain before and after the changes beneath their masks. She saw them being subtly enchanted, saw the curse spreading on them, saw the gentleness of the past gradually turning into a cold and mad one, like a hand manipulating puppets, like a thick haze shrouding the sky above the entire castle, a bone-piercing sharp scream. In an instant, the surging hatred pierced the dome of the castle, rushing towards the dark sky covered in black mist, stirring up the entire black mist. The blood saw and the puppet lady outside the castle had their faces changed dramatically. They immediately felt the almost sky-breaking hatred and resentment. 
The chilling feeling even made them feel palpitations. That is, the puppet lady stared solemnly at the black clouds covering the entire castle, saying, It's hatred. I have never seen a creature generate such a massive amount of hatred. If it's a demon, the power generated by such a massive amount of hatred may surpass both of us. Bloodsaw's gaze flickered, tightly watching the burning castle. The puppet lady turned her head and glanced at him, saying with a slight smile, Aren't you always cherishing your disciple? Why not intervene? Bloodsaw said deeply, No need. The puppet lady was a little surprised, smiling, Aren't you always very protective of your disciple? Bloodsaw said deeply, He had a chance to seek my help. After that incident, I gave him a way to contact me, but he didn't. Either he's already dead, or he believes that even without his teacher, he has the ability to complete this mission on his own. If he really contacted me, I would look down on him. Deepest part of the castle, you are only driven by hatred and jealousy. You just want revenge. You are not qualified to be her mother. Lin supported his body, calmly walking step by step toward her through a trail of blood. You're jealous that your daughter was accepted by this family. You can't tolerate any goodness in your eyes. From the beginning to the end, you've been a malicious witch. You enchanted Carmel to make him love you. You wanted to become the Countess, but you found that the real Countess is far superior to you. You can't stand their feelings. You can't compare to that mother. You envy her tolerance and kindness, so you plotted against her. And you're deaf, it's all because of your own wrongdoing. I saw Carmel in the reenactment of the past. He knew you were a witch a long time ago, but because he loved you, he tried to protect you as much as possible during the witch hunt. However, you didn't appreciate it. Jealousy made you lose your human qualities. Lin pointed at her, saying with seriousness, You've always been an extremely evil witch. You spread the plague in the Count's territory, using dark magic to make the entire Count's territory fearful. He had already investigated your misdeeds, but as a husband, he wanted to give you a chance to change. Yet, you not only didn't take it, but you became even more audacious. Do you hate yourself for being burned to death? Let me tell you, you deserve to die. If you continue to live, that would be a curse to everyone. Each of Lin's words stabbed into her heart like sharp knives. She screamed wildly, I'll kill you. Her belly suddenly began to swell, like the child who had once gestated for ten months, sprouting within her body once again. Splurt, she screamed as her swollen belly burst open. The girl climbed out from her belly, winding around her body, facing her terrified and trembling face with sorrow. Trembling, she reached out with sharp hands, kneeling down, finally fearfully begging. Alice, Alice, no, no, forgive me, forgive me, my daughter. It's them, everything is their fault. You're my daughter, they took you away from me. You should live with your mother, you should grow up by your mother's side. Alice, Alice, I beg you, I beg you to forgive. She pleaded, full of pain. The girl emerging from her belly wept sorrowfully, biting her teeth hard. Countless scenes flashed in her eyes, the past, those images, the family that should have been harmonious. Everything, all of it, the ghost pleaded, but it no longer had any effect. The entire castle began to tremble, countless chains and hooks clattered down from above the freezing chamber. As the curse was lifted, the entire castle began to collapse. Numerous stones and bricks fell, the massive dome cracked with a rumble. Get your head down, you despicable guy. Why do I always have to save you at the last moment? Accompanied by Left Left's yelling, his left hand suddenly extended, grabbing the collapsing wall of the freezer with force, carrying Lin's body straight toward the falling bricks and stones. Lin, breathing heavily, revealed a bitter smile. Allowing Left Left to carry his body, he shuttled between one falling boulder after another. The overhead dome had already collapsed, revealing the sky covered in black mist. The strong wind surged, and a hint of relief appeared on Lin's face. It seemed like there was light falling on his face from the shattered sky. But Lin knew, that was not sunlight. That was just the never-dispersing dust floating in this dark world. But at least, it wasn't the eternal silence of darkness. Left Left quickly landed with Lin, and half of the castle had already completely collapsed. Left Left swiftly reached into Lin's medical kit, rummaging through it. Finally, he pulled out the high-quality recovery potion Lin carried. Pride opened Lin's mouth and poured it in, gurgling. Left Left gritted his teeth. You guy, don't drag me down with you when you die. This young lady still wants to live well, I'm telling you. After I find a way to kill you without harming myself, I'll kill you without any mercy. The situation isn't resolved yet. Alice should have dealt with that fierce spirit, but the truth often brings not warmth, but greater resentment. If Alice loses control and tries to harm us, we'll be in danger. Lefty hesitated, should I run first? You cover the rear. Lin decisively ignored Lefty's suggestion, quickly regaining composure and scanning the surroundings. In the next moment, he caught sight of a figure amidst the rolling debris. 
his pupils contracted because he recognized her. The figure was the corpse of Alice, pieced together by him before. It hadn't been buried in the ruins. Or, remaining calm, Lin slowly approached the figure. Gradually approaching, he heard the suppressed sobbing. The girl, small in stature, hadn't grown since the moment she was dismembered. Lin knew that Alice's consciousness had returned to her original body after the massive surge of resentment. She had consumed the fierce spirit and had probably reached a level of power that made him powerless. She might now be even more terrifying than Lady in Blood. Lefty warned, Brain, don't just stand there stupidly. Run away quickly. Before she attacks you, let's get out of here. However, Lin remained silent, his gaze gradually calming. He didn't retreat but took a step forward. Each step felt like a torturous journey through a blizzard within this short 10-meter distance. But he finally approached the source of the frost, closer to the weeping little girl. He reached out with his frozen hand, gently placing it on her shoulder as if whispering in the cold winter. Alice, it's over now. If you feel lonely, my previous offer still stands. You can consider me as your family. The freezing wind blew ashes everywhere, sprinkling them on the vast expanse of the devastated ruins. Like the perennially unmelted snow, it turned the ground into a pale white. Lefty stood there dumbfounded. A few minutes later, the cold receded, and the intense resentment gradually dissipated. In the ruins, Lin held the little girl sleeping in his arms, stepping calmly out of the wreckage. She seemed tired, eyes closed, tears still staining her face, and one hand tightly clutching Lin's shirt. For the first time since falling into this dark world, she slept peacefully. Lin closed his eyes, grinding his teeth. This damn system, ah. This guy must have had a perverted sense of humor before becoming its own system. What does deceiving the innocent Lolita even mean? It was clearly the kind and loving Dr. Big Brother perfectly healing a little sister troubled by prolonged resentment. How did it become deceiving the innocent Lolita? Am I such a person, without granting me the award for the true kindness, goodness, and beauty flourishing in my heart? It even maliciously slanders its own host. It's just too much. Absolutely unforgivable. Lefty raised his hand, glanced at the sleeping Alice in Lynn's arms, then glanced at him, muttering, This is a bit outrageous. How did you dare? Aren't you afraid she'll kill you? Her power is terrifying now. Lynn tilted his eyebrows, smiling. Because I am a doctor, until the employment relationship is terminated, I cannot abandon my patient. Moreover, he raised his eyebrows, smiling. Since I've already promised this girl, I can't go back on my word. Understand? Lefty was stunned. How did this guy suddenly seem so cool? Moreover, there was even a bit of handsomeness. Was this the true face of this guy? So, so kind and loving. In the distant darkness, Bloodsaw and the puppet lady watched the scene in the ruins from afar, their faces showing a hint of satisfaction. Bloodsaw stretched his arms in a good mood, and the corners of his mouth were almost uncontrollable. Compared to your daughters, my disciple is obviously much better, haha. <laughs> the puppet lady glanced at Bloodsaw's expression, which couldn't hide his desire to show off, and her smile became even brighter. Well, he is indeed very excellent. Such an outstanding boy really makes people suppress the restlessness in their hearts at once. He must be married into the family quickly. No, change of plans. Such a good young man. Only letting the seventh son have him is absolutely not allowed. The first, second, third, and fourth sons all have to be together. If you can make your mother-in-law cherish him, that would be very nice. Inside the castle, Lin stood up with a bewildered expression, looking around. What's going on? How did the favorability of the puppet lady suddenly increase so much for no reason? Could it be that she's nearby? Apart from the life-size puppet awaiting delivery, he really didn't want to have any more contact with her. With a puzzled look, Lin looked around but found nothing, so he shook his head and dismissed the thought. Although she had become much stronger, as a bound spirit, her nature still limited her range of activity, preventing her from truly leaving this place. After some thought, Lin once again activated his diagnostic ability on her. Lin pondered. In other words, his curse removal ability only temporarily cleared one of her curses, similar to Lady Bloodstain. But the earthbound spirit curse still remained inside her body and couldn't be eradicated, right? And if that's the case, when the cooldown time is over, he can indeed temporarily remove her earthbound spirit curse and take her out of this castle. Although it's only one day, it's better than nothing. Lin rubbed his temples and took a deep breath. No, his limited time curse removal ability has too many demands. Lady Bloodstain is thirsty for it. His left hand also needs it. Not to mention, if he encounters certain special situations in the future or sees the little parents again, he must always have cool-down time. Can't I satisfy several at once? 
Those who need my healing and care will definitely increase in the future. While Lin was brainstorming, faintly, he seemed to hear shouts coming from somewhere. But because the wind was too strong, he couldn't hear clearly. Can't leave. Just at this moment, the girl in his arms, with closed eyes, spoke softly. Alice, died here. Evil spirit, can never leave here. Her voice was very low, like the buzz of mosquitoes. Lin's expression slowly calmed down. He closed his eyes. At this moment, he finally made that decision. You can temporarily remove the curses attached to the target. The number of times has increased to two. He activated the limited time curse removal ability on Alice's hair. Hum, one after another, curses that were like chains emerged from Alice's body and were immediately sucked into Lin's hands with a powerful suction force. Alice immediately felt light all over. She opened her cracked eyes in shock, her eyes full of confusion. And in the next moment, Lin, holding her, took a solid step towards the boundary of that ancient castle. No, Alice's lips trembled subconsciously, her little hand suddenly grasping Lin's arm, closing her eyes tightly. Obviously, she was afraid, because for a bound spirit, forcibly leaving the boundaries that bound her would undoubtedly bring them immense pain. But the next moment, that tremendous pain did not come. She also clearly felt that she had left the boundaries of the castle. She finally opened her eyes in a daze, looking at the soul lost street in front of her, and the broken gate of the castle behind her. As if time had stopped for a moment, Lin gently put her down. The windy breeze swayed her golden hair and dress. She absent-mindedly grabbed her wrist and stared at the ancient street in front of her. Lin gave her an encouraging look. She subconsciously took a small step forward, her feet trembling on the hard cobblestones. No more. She had left the boundaries of the ancient castle, but there was no backlash. In that moment, she opened her mouth but couldn't say a word. She turned her head and looked at the tall youth in front of her, looking at his gentle smile, the one who promised to be her brother, her family, her doctor. For some reason, she suddenly felt something turning in her eyes, but she didn't say anything. She walked over and hugged Lin's waist, closing her eyes and pressing her cheek against his chest, hugging tightly. As if everything was communicated without words, it was a deep affection for family. Because, in the end, she was still that little lowly who hadn't grown up, still the lonely little girl yearning for family and loved ones. Perhaps she had turned into a malicious spirit, but her heart still held hope. From start to finish, she remained that kind little girl. Death changed many things, even momentarily changing that small and kind heart. But finally, when malice and resentment faded away, it remained as pure as ever. Upon hearing the prompt, Lin was momentarily surprised, then lowered his head to look at the small lowly closing her eyes in his arms, afraid of getting hurt. Lin smiled, closed his eyes, and lightly tapped his temples with his fingers. Ah, uh, no choice. Since the system mission has been triggered, he can only obediently complete it. Although he doesn't have the experience of raising a sister, he should be able to handle the role of a brother. And the Soul Lost Street is not far from the Wandering Soul Alley. In the future, he can often come here to accompany Alice, help cleanse her soul, stay for a few days, and it should be fine. Aw, uh, really troublesome. While Lin was grumbling in his heart, Alice, hugging him, opened her eyes. She looked at him, her cracked eyes reflecting his face. Alice, has something to give. To brother, Lin snapped out of it. Alice gently stepped back, closing her eyes, and her long eyelashes swayed slightly. Thank you. Thank you for telling Alice the truth. And thank you for agreeing to be Alice's family. But I also know, you definitely won't stay here forever. She raised her head, looking into Lin's eyes, so clear that it made people feel distressed. I saw a lot in your consciousness. You're not as evil as you appear. You just want to live in this world in your own way. To bring kindness to people. Lin silently looked into her eyes. She reached out her hand, and a faint red halo slowly appeared at her fingertips. So, please, no matter what, spend more time with me. Alice is very grateful. Alice really hopes that you can become a reliable family. Lin was shocked. He had thought about Alice's special reward, but he didn't expect her to give him control over the castle. It's like writing the male protagonist's name on the property certificate. And she also gave him a skill that allows him to teleport back anytime. This is simply an invincible life-saving skill. Of course, he accepted. Lin regained his senses, looked at Alice extending her hand towards him, and looked at the hopeful gleam in her eyes. Finally, Lin smiled, reached out his hand, and shook hands with her, saying, Thank you, Alice. In an instant, behind them, the half-collapsed castle slowly emitted rolling black mist, and the curse was restored with the system's automatic recovery. The broken bricks floated in the air without wind, and the collapsed walls slowly began to reverse. Everything was changing back to how it was before they arrived. With the howling wind, when they opened their eyes again, behind them was the towering and eerie castle. 
However, this time, compared to before, it was no longer as sinister and terrifying. Everything seemed warm, and on Alice's petite face, a barely noticeable smile finally appeared. Although it was fleeting, it seemed filled with happiness. But just at this moment, suddenly, from the side street, Heavy footsteps could be heard. Thump, thump, like a heartbeat, it was especially thrilling. With a clatter, Alice immediately felt a great crisis and stood in front of Lynn. In the numerous cracks covering her body, a dazzling blood light emerged. She stared at the darkness as if facing a great enemy, her whole body tensed. Don't be nervous, little girl, a faint voice came. The time has come. I'm here to complete our unfinished deal. In the darkness, the pig-headed butcher slowly walked out, carrying a cleaver. The large pig head opened its faint eyes, and his gaze fell on Lin's face. My heart, where is it? In an instant, at a distance from the castle, Bloodsaw's face changed dramatically as he saw this scene. As if suddenly realizing something, Bloodsaw instinctively took a step back, his eyes trembling, and his lips couldn't help but quiver. That, that is, he swore he didn't make a mistake, even though he only saw a back at that time. Two years ago, when he found Lin unconscious at the entrance of his pharmacy, that monster, it appeared in the wandering soul alley. He still remembers the scene vividly. The alley is filled with black mist. An unprecedented illusion appears in the sky. A crimson and eerie blood moon hangs in the high sky, resembling a giant bloodshot eye, peering at the earth. He hears a knocking sound, finding Lin unconscious at the door. A trail of blood-red footprints extends from the shop entrance into the distant black mist. In the black mist, he sees a figure. Black mane covers his back, and he carries a blood-dripping butcher knife on his shoulder. He turns his head, allowing a glimpse of the monster's profile. Under the crimson blood moon, it's like a dark omen. The monster induces an indescribable sense of fear, not based on strength but on the oppression it brings to these dark creatures from its stature and soul. It feels chilling to the core. Like a demon, Bloodsaw raises his head solemnly. He has almost no hesitation, his gaze stern. He quickly moves towards Lin's direction. The puppet lady follows him. In front of the castle, Alice confronts the pig butcher and Lin is about to speak. However, he senses the approaching presence behind him and sees Bloodsaw and the puppet lady rushing over. He had a rough idea that his teacher and the others should be nearby, given the system prompt from the puppet lady. Yeah, Bloodsaw nods, not saying much, standing beside him, squinting, staring at the pig butcher. Lin, did you offend this? Butcher, he asks gravely, tense muscles and vigilant eyes. Lin smiles and says, teacher, you're overthinking. I just made a deal with this gentleman. He lifts his head, smiles at the tense Alice, pats her shoulder reassuringly, and faces the pig butcher, saying, First, I want to express my gratitude. Without the heart you gave me, I couldn't have completed the final piece of Alice's puzzle. As for the heart of extreme malice you want, Lin pauses, thinks for a moment, then slowly extends his hand, covering his own chest. Feeling the strong heartbeat, he smiles and says, I don't have it, but, as you mentioned, you said you could substitute it with my heart. I can give it to you now. As these words come out, Bloodsaw and the puppet lady's faces change drastically. A heart isn't just a part you can replace casually. Bloodsaw grabs his shoulder, shouting, Do you think hearts can be switched like components? Lin turns to his teacher, blinks, and says, Isn't it? Teacher, you've changed one for me before. I'm still alive and well, right? Bloodsaw stumbles for a moment, then grabs his collar, looking deep into his eyes, saying, because the one I gave you isn't an ordinary heart. Lin freezes, but Bloodsaw doesn't continue. He releases Lin's collar, turns around, and stares at the pig butcher in front. His voice becomes heavy, and, didn't you hear the meaning in his words? He said he wants the heart of extreme malice, which doesn't just refer to the beating piece inside your chest. It includes your soul, your state of mind. In an instant, silence falls. Bloodsaw's voice becomes even deeper, moreover, you didn't catch his meaning. He said he can use your own heart, but he didn't specify if it's a kind heart, a loving heart, a disgusting heart, or a ruthless one. If you give it to him recklessly, it's like making a deal with the devil. The final interpretation lies with him. What you ultimately lose won't just be a beating piece of flesh. Because there is a devil clan in the dark world, extremely lawful yet incredibly evil. They won't easily lay hands on you but will trap you step by step through contracts, leading you into the trap they've set in advance. If you're not careful, you'll be lost forever. Lin calms down and looks at the pig butcher, asking with his eyes. The pig butcher's expression doesn't change. He calmly says, your teacher is right. The heart I want includes not only the beating piece in your chest but also your soul. 
He reaches into his pocket, takes out a pocket watch, glances at it, and says calmly, 30 seconds. Make a decision quickly. After the countdown, I'll consider it a breach of contract. Tick, tick. The sound of ticking needles resonates in the surroundings. Len's gaze flickers, looking at the teacher's expression. He can guess that this pig butcher's strength is undoubtedly very powerful. Even the enhanced Alice reveals an expression as if facing a formidable foe, confirming the problem. Is he a king? Or maybe the origin? No, that's unlikely. Lin's brain turns quickly, his eyes flickering. Moreover, notifying the little family must be too late now. Finding an extreme malice heart is not an easy task, let alone within 30 seconds. And if that's the case, Lin lifts his head, his gaze steady. He takes a step forward, reaching towards his chest with his right hand. All right, then use mine. But before he finishes speaking, a chilly little hand grabs his wrist. With a face full of cracks, Alice lifts her head, her eyes deep, gently shaking her head at him. Then she turns around, lifting her head, saying, I have. I'll make a deal with you on behalf of my brother. As soon as these words come out, Lin is shocked. But before he can say anything, Alice suddenly opens her mouth, and a cold ghostly aura rushes out. In the anxious gaze of those around, a pitch black, Continuously beating heart slowly emerges from her mouth, floating in front of the pig butcher. Cold, eerie, and pitch black. The heart is crawling with grim black slime, still pulsating continuously. Faint screams of misery and resentment emanate from it. That is, in an instant, an introduction to the heart appears in his mind. Heart of malice, condensed from the jealousy and hatred of Mrs. Mary, Lynn's breath suddenly quickens. Slowly, Alice, holding the suspended heart, lifts her head and says, This is my birth mother's heart. Her malice and hatred make me chilling. Lynn falls into silence, just gazing at Alice's profile without saying a word. Alice takes steps forward, lifting her head, Lynn brother got Alice's heart back from you. So let me complete this deal. As these words come out, Lynn is left speechless. He sniffed it and said, very good quality. Immediately, Bloodsaw felt the oppressive aura dissipate from the surroundings. He couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, though his expression remained solemn. Alice, Lynn frowned, gently placing his hand on her shoulder. Alice shook her head, gazing into the distance. There's nothing to hold on to. She is not only my birth mother but also the source of my hatred. I won't harbor any nostalgia for her. In the butcher's hand, a black and ethereal elongated face was pulled from the heart with a sharp wail, echoing painful cries around. Alice, my daughter, you can't trade me away. You can't. No. A sharp and shrill voice constantly resounded from the distorted illusion. Both Lynn and Alice turned to look at the scene, but Alice's eyes showed no emotion. Amidst the agonizing screams, the face pulled from the heart slowly gathered in the butcher's hand, finally turning into a black bead. He sniffed it and then placed it into a pouch on his belt. The crisp sound of beads colliding came from it. Then, he looked down at Lynn, lifted the bloody cleaver, turned, and walked into the darkness. We'll meet again. Silence fell around. However, as he took only a few steps, Bloodsaw suddenly reached out, asking, Wait, I have a question for you. Lin was surprised, but the butcher didn't stop, as if he hadn't heard him, continuing forward. Bloodsaw went up and loudly asked, I want to know, two years ago, did you appear in the ghost soul alley? Was my disciple the one you left at my shop door? Buzz. In an instant, Lin's expression changed drastically. The butcher also halted his steps. Lin was almost instantly filled with waves of shock. He looked at his teacher in disbelief and said, Teacher, why are you asking this? Am I not the one you adopted? Bloodsaw tensed up, saying seriously, Yes, I did find you outside when you were unconscious, but there's something I didn't tell you. You were intentionally placed at my shop door. I heard the noise, so I went out to check. The creature I saw at that time was him. A buzz filled the surroundings, and you could only hear Lin's increasingly rapid breathing. How could this be? Wasn't he the one who fell into this world by himself? Could there be some hidden secrets among them? In the flowing silence, the butcher didn't turn around. Holding the blood-stained cleaver, his voice finally came. Yes, he gave an answer. Lin's body hair stood on end in an instant. Why did you send me here? Lin stared at him. The butcher didn't turn around, his voice faintly reaching Lin's ears. Someone made a risky deal with me, and I agreed. Lin was shocked, and when he wanted to continue asking something, the butcher's body seemed to disappear from the spot like a ghost, as if he had never appeared. Lin rushed over quickly, his gaze anxious. But even in the evil spirit vision, there was no way to capture any trace of the other party. How could this be? A deal. What deal? And with whom? Before falling into this dark world, he was just an ordinary young man on earth. Why would he be targeted? Lin's brow furrowed, but the calm and composure developed over the past two years quickly restored his reason and calmness. 
Alice, how did you hire this butcher? Lynn turned around, asking Alice. Alice was slightly startled, trying to think, and then shook her head. Her brow lightly furrowed. It's vague. My thoughts seem to be interfered with. I know it exists in the castle, but every time I think about the butcher, I naturally don't delve deeper. A hint of confusion appeared in her eyes. I did hire him, but I can't remember the relevant details. Lynn's gaze became heavy, because the greatest fear comes from the unknown. And if what the teacher said was true, there was obviously some cause and effect between himself and the butcher. And the position of the butcher seemed to far surpass all the creatures here. Lin rubbed his temples, deciding to temporarily put this matter aside. Even if he racked his brains, he wouldn't be able to figure out the reason right now. Then he turned, looking seriously at Bloodsaw, saying, Teacher, when we go back, can you tell me in detail about the situation at that time? Bloodsaw naturally agreed, and a trace of relief appeared in his eyes. He patted Lin's shoulder, saying, I'll tell you when we get back, but you did a great job on this mission. Teacher didn't expect that you not only completed this mission excellently, but also unexpectedly gained some unexpected surprises. Alice turned her head, looking at Bloodsaw with deep eyes, making Bloodsaw's hair stand on end. He coughed and said, Well, if there's nothing wrong, shall we go back? After all, this is not a place to stay for a long time, right? Lin nodded, but his thoughts remained heavy. Okay, and taking advantage of this opportunity, he could also take this newly recognized little sister out for a stroll. Alice reached out and grabbed two fingers of Lin, silently following beside him, like an obedient little sister. Alice, do you want to go to the place where I live first? Lin smiled. Alice nodded. She didn't refuse, just following Lin for a while. Suddenly, she seemed to remember something, stared blankly, then turned to look in the direction of the castle. Lin, did you forget something? Did I? Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.